Richard Krause. Mr. Burton, going through the exhibit, we're reminded just really how prolific your career has been and that you were a genius from the very beginning. How did rejection affect your career? Did you see all the rejection slips up on the wall? There, there were more. We could, there could have been a whole room of rejection slips, to be honest. I mean, you use it and it propelled you, but, but how did you feel and how did that rejection, primarily from Disney, when you had these brilliant ideas and they didn't see what you saw, how did that affect your career? Forward. Well, I think, you know, when I was at Disney, it was a quite a strange time because I, you know, I felt like a the princess in the castle, you know, like I was treated nicely, but s still locked up in the, in the castle uh, tower. Um, so I was very grateful of being able to sit in a room and draw anything I wanted to for a couple of years, and then, but also the frustration of knowing that would never see the light of day. You know, all those kind of negative, just give you more, you know, spirit, fighting spirit, so to speak. So I, I think, you know, I've been lucky throughout my life to, to have those kind of things to fight against, because I think that, that keeps you kind of going and keeps you alive and, and you know, just, just gets your blood going, you know. So uh, I always looked at those experiences as still quite positive. Yes. All your movies really create um, a very visionary kind of world, very fantasy world. What kind of what kind of weird, real world influences do you were you influenced by, like in terms of fashion, in terms of the decor? What kind of influences do you grab from the real world? Well, you know, real world is always a strange term, isn't it? Because it's like, uh, um, you know, I think you're you're a product of a lot of where you come from, you know, like for me, Southern California, where there was no weather and no real sense of design or real sense of culture, you know, you, you kind of, you're deprived of those things, so I think you find it in other ways, you know, like I found it in, you know, the opposite extreme to the environment I grew up was probably like German expressionism, you know, and horror movies and dark and weather and, and lightning and rain and... You know, I think you, 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 what you're lacking in your life, you seek out in other ways. And, and, and so that, to me, was always my inspirations. You know, things with atmosphere, things with mood, things with, you know, dark shadows and light and dark together and, you know, monsters. You know, those, those sort of mirror things that you felt in the real world, you know. Like, I can look at any monster movie and kind of see my relatives in there somewhere, you know. So it's like you, you gain stuff you know, in the strangest way sometimes. That's great. Yes, go ahead. Hey, Tim, I'm just wondering, if New York is Gotham City, what would Toronto be? And why is this city a good backdrop for your exhibition? <laughs> well, I mean, I, look at uh, what I know about Toronto is I, I came here many, many years ago working with the animation companies here and stuff. So I always felt it was a very artist-friendly city. Um, you know, and you certainly see that from the festival. It's got a very good spirit to it. People like coming to it, and, and I think that that's the, the key thing here. It just seems like there's a nice openness, and like I said, there's a, there's you know, it's strange to come to the city and feel like there's an artistic vibe here, but that's what it feels like. Yes, who's next? Yep, either of you. Ma'am in the middle. Yep. Can you grab a mic? Not you yet, Richard. Okay. You'll be next. <laughs> Hi. Um, could you talk a little bit about how your role in the creative process has changed over your career? Like, I'm assuming in the beginning you were involved in, in all aspects of character design and costume, and then later in the exhibit you start seeing other, other people's names on some of the work. Well, I mean, that's part part of the joy of making a movie is working with collaborators. I mean, I you know, when I, like, you're right, when I first started, when you're just... Like in animation class, you do it. You know, you you draw the characters, you cut it, you do everything, which is great. You know, because it gives you a good background on everything. But as as you go on, I mean, that that's again part of the joy is working with collaborators, people that surprise you, people that you know you try to tell them what you're doing, and then they get it, and they add something to it, and and you know whether it's actors or designers or whomever. I've really gotten to enjoy that process because, you know, it, it, it keeps things fresh. You, keep, you know, you get surprised by people, and that's, you know, 
that's part of the joy of, of making a film. That's great. Uh, Richard, yep. you ready to roll? Ready. Yep. Uh, <laughs> is there, in the last room of the exhibition, we see some drawings for films that didn't get made, trick or treat, things like that. Is there any chance at some point that you would revisit that material? Um, not necessarily, because at that time when I was doing those projects, I was just, like I said, throwing a room and just kind of working on random projects that were, some were more developed than others, some were just ideas that Disney was thinking about, whatever. So I never, a lot of those stuff kind of be became like a gray area to me. I mean, um, y you know, even though, say, uh, like Nightmare Before Christmas, was around the time I was working on stuff for Trick or Treat, but not really. And so, I, you know, there's kind of a, a gray area in terms of when I was at Disney that were just ideas were just ideas. And they, so, and that's what, one of the things I liked about the way they presented the show is that it just sort of shows the weird kind of crossover of like, you know, things sometimes start out more abstractly and little one little sketch might become something for a bigger idea or not. I mean, and, and that's what I liked about the, the presentation of it, just sort of showing the, the weird process. That's great. Yes, go ahead. Uh, can I get a... On that idea of crossover and give and take, being in Lightbox, I can't help but think that one of the great inspiring successes here was the release of Uncle Boo Me, who can recall his past lives, a film that you... We're very instrumental in raising its profile, and maybe that idea of give and take and crossover, you can talk about the inspiring idea that someone working in the kind of production sphere you work in as a kind of visionary, and someone like a pitch, a pitch upon in a very different way, that we don't have to see those two modes of filmmaking as exclusive, which I think the jury's decision at can really struck a blow for it. I think you should be very well, proud of it. Well, thank you, because, I mean, you're not, not everybody agrees with you, <laughs> but that's the great thing about the festival, isn't it? I, I mean, I, I it, that was a film that really hit me and, and grew on me, and, and, and you're absolutely right. It's also, it's like you don't think about this, but it's also a film that would never, no one would ever, you know, I mean, other films have more of a chance out there. That was one that we felt just, you know, is special and, you know, might not get a big, you know, might not get a big push for it in certain ways, but, but you know, Whatever culture, whatever countries, that I, you know, what he was doing spoke to me, and that's again, that's part of the beauty of film. You know, you don't have to speak the same language or anything, but still have something you get it and feel it very strongly, and that's the power of film, which is, you know, which, that was a strong one. Hi, I'm um, just going through that exhibit. You can see every creative idea you've had and how many you have had. Is there ever a time where you just hit a wall and you're out of ideas, or do you just constantly have things flowing? No, I mean, you're always hitting a, a wall to some degree. Um, but at the same time, you, you know, I, I try not to worry too much about it. I, I, for me, I always try to at least spend time, especially in these days and age where technology is so, you know, like where you can be reached any time at any given, you know. I, I try to avoid that and... Uh, Spend some time, as much as you can each day, just you know, staring out into space or staring out a window. I find that is sometimes the most uh, you get the most ideas and the most feelings when you're not involved in you know the things that we all have to do every day. It kind of takes your mind from kind of just spacing out, and which is again a very important part of the day. Richard. Gross.